any time out of your month, you can escape this conference and don't feel free to fear and stuff. Um, so, I'm glad you're all here. Uh, so, I'm Julian, and uh, today we're going to talk about HTTP. Uh, but I actually kind of, kind of hate just pure technical talks. So, actually, there's like a narrative around this about learning. Um, so, I just started a new job in Amazon, uh, which is a great, great company. Um, and I know absolutely nothing about, about geospatial systems or not like that. <laughs> um, so tell me if this sounds familiar if any, any of you have uh, done something kind of like this. Uh, so I, I was sitting down at my computer and I'm you know, reading up on, on geo stuff, maps and the company and reading blogs and all of a sudden I have like 100 tabs open. And you kind of get like a sinking feeling of, oh my god, there's... <laughs> Oh my god, there's more than I can possibly ever learn. Um, and if you're like in the software, you feel that it, and maybe you think that you, know, you should not be in software. That's definitely not true because all of the people that have been here a while know that that is normal and you just learn how to deal with it. <laughs> um, so I want to, the whole purpose of this talk is to, is to share one way to do that, which is by ignoring as much complexity as possible and focusing on the fundamentals of things. So we all use you know, our web browser every day. Web browsers have like tens of millions of lines of code. There's way more code in Firefox or Chrome than in the Linux kernel or probably in Windows, which is frankly really scary. <laughs> um, but people who don't know how any of that code works at all can be paid and be great web developers, which is really awesome. So. Um, I want to show you a cool tool called NetCat, uh, and we're going to do some fun stuff with it, and hopefully you all will uh, learn some cool foundation stuff. So NetCat uh, looks like this. It's a nice little command line uh, utility. So um, everything on the, on the net works with, with what they call like a client-server model. So there will be one thing listening, and then there will be other, other things uh, connecting to it, and, and then they'll all talk, and it's great. So, so Netcat here, we can run it in server mode and say, we'll listen on a certain port, we can pick like 3001. Uh, and then the dash K says, keep it open for multiple requests. We'll be doing that for English all the talk. So, we can have this running. Notice it doesn't really do anything yet. Uh, we can switch over to the other side. We can run it again. And this time we'll run it in non client mode. So we'll type localhost 3001. It's going to connect to the other one here. Nothing happens. So nothing happens again yet. But uh, if I type hello, it shows up on the other side. And if I switch over to this other side again, and I type A, hey, it shows back up on the other side. So this is, NetCat is pretty much the simplest program you can run that does network communication. I'm just doing it on my own laptop to itself here, but uh, if any of you want, you can like, find a friend and like, get their IP address, and you can uh, like, talk to each other over the internet with NetCat. Um, but what you see here is like, exactly what's typed. So uh, if you want some sort of security, maybe you shouldn't you know, type in like, your secret messages. Uh, you could do something, uh, if you've heard of uh, Rope 13, maybe instead of typing hello, you'll type uh, or read, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, this is what you see here on the screen, and that is exactly what's going on in the network. So let's do something a little bit more cool with it. Let's, um, I've got a little web server running. So it's, it's hosting this page. And you can see, you can imagine what the HTML looks like to this page. There's like a little header, there's an image, there's some other images, there's some links. So what happens, we go over to this tab. Oh, and it's running on port 3000. It's a uh, Rails, it's not Rails 5. There's no, no TurboLinx 3 yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's do uh, netcat, again for localhost, and port 3000. So nothing happens. What if we type, uh, we type git intro, HTTP 1.1. So we hit enter, and we get a bunch of stuff back. So the stuff at the bottom here. Oh shit, that you're all right. Oh, we need one more thing. Live code effects. So we need uh, we need the uh, host. So HTTP 1.1, unlike the older versions of HTTP, is actually a new stickler about these sort of things. HTTP 1.1, and that will be the host. And the host can just be local host. So now, there we go. So look at this, we get some HTML back. If I scroll up just a little bit, you'll see exactly what you expect. You see a title, uh, you see uh, Rails through its own style sheet, 
And then up here, we see some more stuff, which is in its own way more interesting. So these are the actual headers that are sent back uh, by the web server. So the web server says 200 OK, everything's great. Uh, you probably recognize some of these if you've ever looked at like the Chrome or Firefox developer tools. Is this thing, uh, this thing going in now, maybe? Yeah, okay. It's supposed to have pushed the bandwidth, but whatever. Uh, anyways, so uh, it's got some stuff here, it's got the dates. I guess if the servers don't know about the date, then maybe they need to clean that. It says what you're gonna what you're gonna get is, is some HTML. That's good, so you know how to interpret it. And uh, but if, if all these should look familiar if you see the uh, if you've used like the Chrome developer tools. But the cool thing is this stuff is is not some visual interpretation of, of the headers or or some sort of uh, you know some sort of fancy nice display, but this is actually the text that is sent over the network. So it's really nice to know that whenever you have something in the headers of your HTTP requests, it's just some text. So it's up here, and we'll play around with it more in a second. Let's flip things around. So let's run uh, let's run Netcat again. We're going to run it in, in uh, server mode. So we'll do 3003, and we'll keep it open here. So it's uh, Netcat's waiting for requests here. And go back to the browser, and we can connect to, to 3003. And Firefox will diligently wait for a while, which is good because I'm a slow human and I cannot respond to HTTP requests. Uh, I'm even slower than Rails at responding to HTTP requests. So, so this is what Firefox sent along. So it sends a bunch of stuff. Uh, so it sends a uh, git request for the root, just you know what you would expect. Uh, it sends a user agent string. If you're ever interested in a really uh, crazy tale of like deception in various companies and and mystery and stuff uh, in the history of tech. Uh, read up about user agent strings and how they're made because they're, they're pretty crazy. Uh, and Firefox says things like it'll accept HTML, it'll accept XHTML, it'll accept XML, but it really doesn't want to accept XML quite as much. And then it'll accept anything else, but not even as much as that. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. But now here's the good part. So, so Firefox is still hopefully diligently waiting. And we can just start typing some stuff. We can type uh, HTTP 1.1, 200 OK. And if I make a typo, then that sucks. But... And uh, we can hit that twice to separate from the headers from the body. And we can just start typing some HTML. So I can type like H1, hello. And then uh, if you've ever used the Linux command, or Linux, uh, Unix terminal, you know, Control D will, will kill the output, keep things going. So if I switch back over to Firefox, it says hello with some, H with some HTML. So it's pretty cool. So we just like type some HTML and Firefox and what to do with it. So let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's keep building. Let's run another server. Uh, and it got 2004 this time. Keep it open. This is actually really important. You'll see why. So we're going to just change the port here. Do the exact same thing again. And I'm just going to type the same request again, except I'm going to add one thing. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of this HTML. So, HTTP 1.1, 200 OK. And then I'm going to make a little bit more complete page. So let's start with a head. Right, and we're going to add a, a link tag. We're going to add some a link to a style sheet. So, rel equals style sheet. And href, we can actually rename it here. Style.css. Let's see, whenever you use a style sheet, it's not called style.css. I have that. Get a typo. Oh, thank you. Save the uh, Style sheet href. Let's figure out maybe the type of the thing. It doesn't matter. I don't think it doesn't matter. Uh, CSS. Tag. That was the head tag. And then let's do another. Let's do a body tag. Let's do another another H1. Type hello again. Not making any more typos. Well, actually, browsers are ridiculously forgiving in what they'll accept. Let's close out that body tag. We're going to the gym. We're going to our, our pod. <laughs> okay, let's hit enter. Control D. Uh, so what came back is a whole other request. And now Firefox is asking for a style sheet. Notice this time it says, hey, I really want some CSS. And anything else it doesn't want at all. This number, this Q number is quite a bit lower. So if we go back to Firefox, um, it's still kind of waiting here down at the, down at the bottom. It says it's waiting. Uh, I think this below here is actually from the last one, so we should ignore that. So let's type some CSS. So let's uh, let's let's do some stuff with our H1 text. What color do we want to make them? Red. 
Red, red it is. All right. Color red. So let's sit in here. Hold D. Go back here. And we have hello in red. Kind of cool, right? So um, if you've ever uh, if you've ever gone to a web page and the HTML loads, and then you see like a little spinner, and you see then like a uh, div opens, and like then an image loads like a couple seconds later. Uh, you, you're told to not do stuff like that, right? Because basically how those, how those, uh, how those steps work is there's multiple round trips to the server, right? And uh, human web server Julian is ridiculously slow. Uh, but even, you know, if, if your users are, are on like, a mobile network, it's, it's almost as slow as I am uh, sometimes, based on my, my phone, at least. Uh, so, so you saw that there was, you know, like a, multiple round trips here. And uh, I, I've never found a way to drive that home. Better than to actually see the multiple requests on the Let's do something even more fun. Let's talk about cookies. Uh, so, uh, I live in Berlin right now, and uh, if you've ever been to Europe or you've uh, been following uh, EU politics, they're, they're really scared of cookies. Uh, every single web page I go to now uh, asks me if I'd like to accept cookies, and uh, it gets kind of fun. So, let's, let's see what, what the story is. So we're going to do the same thing as, as last time. We're going to do netcat oh, L2005 this time. And we'll just keep it open. Let's uh, open a new tab, 2005, hit enter. And we get our request just like we've seen before. So we're going to throw something into the headers here. It's going to set a cookie. It's pretty simple. Do the same thing as before, HTTP 1.1 and 200. OK. But then we're going to type our header line. We're going to do sets cookie. And uh, what would we like our cookie to be called? Any suggestions? It can be any, it can be any text we want. Monster. Cookie monster. Cookie monster. Awesome. And then let's just do an H1. Hello, cookies. Cookies are yummy. Cool. So if we go back, it says hello, cookies. Nothing really changed. But if we refresh this page, we get back here, and in addition to all the uh, Google tracking stuff that is, is being used to uh, show me ads, uh, you can see that our cookie monster thing is in the cookies. And basically, that's really all a cookie is. It's just a line in the header that your browser remembers and sends it back the next time around. And uh, obviously, uh, they can get fairly complicated, but that's all a cookie is. Let's go on to JavaScript. That's perfect. Uh, we're going to run one more server. Actually, this one. We have a cool example. So, uh, use pages JavaScript example. So, this is just a, just a view from our little Rails app here. So, what this thing is going to do that we're going to load up in a second, uh, just because I don't want to really type this HTML every time. I'm clearly drawing the typers. So, we've got some JavaScript here. It's just using jQuery. It's going to do a get request to this URL, 2006. JS pull, and whatever it gets back is just going to kind of append into this uh, this content div down here. So it looks like this 1,000 JavaScript things, 300 that would be It's a movie. So it says jQuery put stuff below, and it's waiting. And now if we go, if we close this, actually no, we have to we have to start a server before we. Uh, before we, before we uh, send our browser off to, to get a data. So we'll run it again. 2006, and we'll do that just because. It's the same thing again. Local host, JavaScript example. So now if we go back here, we've got another request. This one's again a little bit different. Uh, for a, a XHR request, our request will accept anything. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and we can respond back with some text, we can respond back with uh, like some XML, some more JavaScript. But there's one thing we have to do. Uh, we would have to do HTTP 200 OK, just like before. Uh, and we also have to set uh, another header here. So the people who make our browsers are very nice. Uh, they're very friendly. They want to protect us. And they don't want, uh, they don't want uh, our browsers to be able to just run any script from anywhere that finds on the internet. So they ask any server that's sending back a response to some some JavaScript XHR to, to say that it's okay to use this because it, 
could be it could be uh, a post request that's you know going to be like uh, deleting something from a list or doing something crazy. So uh, we have to type accept uh, accept origin ACAO uh, accept. Anyone remember what it's called? I have written down some that. Uh, access control will not allow for it. Access control will allow origin. We can just set star. Basically, what that says is anyone can uh, can grab this stuff, which is great for a little time. So there's our header, and then we can just type it. hello from JavaScript. And if we get back here, we see that magically hello from JavaScript is here thanks to magical jQuery. So that's all XHR, XHR request is. It's just a slight variation on, uh, on the exact the same request we've been doing before. So one last thing, uh, let's talk about HTTP2, which was just finalized as a spec just a couple weeks ago. So let me show you uh, an HTTP2 uh, request. So <laughs> it's a little bit different. Uh, I have some bad news and some good news. Uh, bad news is that uh, NetCat will not work to do plain text issues. The good news is the reason it won't work is because all HTTP requests uh, require uh, require encryption, which is awesome. Uh, the web we live in today needs encryption. It is even for even for new sites or things where you're not logged in. There's just too many potential dangers to having plain text HTML. Anyone in the way between you and the server you're talking to can just start intercepting things and. Uh, if you saw the, the recent fund that GitHub had uh, with their denial of service attacks from China, uh, they are definitely uh, looking forward to HTTP2. Uh, the good news about HTTP2 beyond that is uh, HTTP2 is significantly smarter about what it sends uh, and when it sends. So we saw earlier, right, with the CSS, um, we, we type our, our HTML document, we send it off to uh, we send it off to our web browser. The web browser looks at it and it says back to the server, oh hey, by the way, I got that nice HTML you sent me. I'm going to need this style sheet too. But what percentage of the time do you think uh, right after a server gets a request for some HTTP or some HTML, it gets that request for the style sheet? Maybe 100% of the time? So uh, HTTP2 is a little bit smarter. And instead of waiting for the web browser to come back and say, hey, I need this style sheet. When the web, browser, the web server really already knows that, um, the web server can actually send the HTML and then essentially unprompted, it can also say, oh, by the way, web browser, I have a bunch that you're going to need this CSS, so here you go. Uh, so that's great. That solves a lot of the problems with round trips uh, for multiple assets and JavaScript and requests taking forever. So that's really cool. Um, and there's a bunch of other cool stuff about HTTP too. The good news is when you're in your developer tools, uh, all the semantics are exactly the same. So you've probably looked, you've probably been doing HTTP2 requests already, or really speedy requests, I guess, uh, and you don't even know it. And if you were to look at those uh, requests in the developer tools, you wouldn't notice anything. All the headers, uh, all the semantics, all the, uh, you don't have to, you know, forget that 404 means not found, or 500 means server error. It's all exactly the same. Uh, but if you want to record something like this, you can't use that cat. You have to use that. I actually use an awesome program called Wireshark that lets you inspect everything going on the network. It's really cool about their methods. So I want to show you one last thing uh, about netcat. So if you have a request, a, a request that's a little bit more complicated, maybe it has some, some binary data, you don't really or can't, you don't really want to, or you can't type it out, um, you can you can send that, you can type it into a file or create a file that has the response that you want. To however you want, and you can send it off to netcat. So let's do this. So we'll do netcat listen on port 3008, and we're going to just send a file over. And there's a file here called thanks. So now what this means is we go over to localhost for 3008. You get 